Okay, people, the day has finally come. It's Friday, September 1st. Um, getting the old truck saddled up, greased, changed the uh, fuel filter, getting ready to make the long haul, about 1,000 miles out to Colorado for my over-the-counter archery elk tag. This will be the third year that I've gone to um, this location, this unit. Um, haven't shot one yet, but every trip has been successful, in my opinion. Getting close to elk, hearing them bugle, nothing like it. Um, have not shot an elk with my uh, bow yet. So, got a good feeling about this year, though. Um, I've shot a few elk, two bulls and a couple cows with my with a rifle. So hoping to get it done with a bow this year. I've got the truck set up. I'll be sleeping up top. Have the coolers up here beside my bunk. I'll be sleeping in the truck on the way out. I'm not getting hotel rooms or anything like that. Doing it kind of the cheap way. Then I'll be camping. Obviously, I'm packing everything in. Sleeping out in the wilderness. So I've got all my gear. Pretty much loaded up. I need to go in the house, grab my clothes. But getting ready to leave here. It's about seven o'clock, maybe seven thirty. I wanted to be on the road by now, but it hasn't happened. But some of you guys might appreciate this here. Some Western hunting has been a tradition. In my family for a while. Most of these would be my grandpa's and uncle's. A couple of those over there on the right are mine. But mule deer, mostly elk, and some uh, spike elk. When they first started hunting out west, you could shoot spikes in Colorado. But many years of hunting right there. So, plan is to uh, finish getting everything loaded up and start the journey. I'll be driving out by myself. This will be the first year I've gone out by myself. So the first week, I'll be all alone. And then my brother AJ and his good buddy Ryan, they'll be coming out the second week. So it's going to be at least two-week trip, uh, possibly three weeks if depending on the crops and the uh, the harvest this year so it's gonna be a long trip so I'm definitely looking forward to spending some time in Colorado but take a look at this Indiana sunset Lord thank you for this land that we live in of freedom and opportunity I ask that you give me strength and courage to serve you that you grant me safety while I'm on my journey to Colorado, that you guide my steps while I'm in the mountains, that I don't just see pretty sunrises, mountain views, and sunsets as your creation, but that I feel your presence and see your wonder and power. Thank you most of all for your son and the sacrifice that he made for us. Amen. Hey guys, Sunday, September 3rd. I put a few cameras out um, about two and a half weeks ago. I saw three bulls in that area, so headed back to check those. I wanted to make it at least to the creek so that I had water to cook. So I'm gonna go a little bit farther, see if I can't get to that first camera tonight. But this is the creek I'll be 
staying pretty close to most of this week. Made it to the first camera. It ended up getting dark last night. So I set up camp last night and hiked in here this morning. Got some tracks right out here in the mud. Some rubs from the previous years. Maybe a year or two years old, I don't know. But I definitely got down in here and really worked these trees over. Yep. Alright, let's see what's on the camera. Okay, made it to the second camera. Um, I've already checked it. And there was a cow moose and a cow elk on it. And that same small four point that was on the first camera. So I think I might pull this camera and uh, move it on down to a little bit better spot. Just a little game trail right here that runs right through here. But I'll keep moving, get to that the third camera. Well, we made it to the third camera. It kind of is on a game trail where two or three game trails funnel together. And again, it kind of overlooks a marsh, swampy marsh. You can already tell quite a few fresh tracks through here, look like. So that's a good sign. But last year, my cousin and I Let's see. We saw a really nice bull, well, two bulls, and they were right up here. A couple bulls, a couple cows, and we uh, went up after them, but never did get close enough to take a shot with a bow. So, this is where we're at right now. Get over take a look at this camera. I'm excited to see what's on this one. Okay, we're here at the fourth camera. It kind of runs right along, right through here, out through the top there. But we've got the camera set up, shooting right across the trail. Here we are, made it to the last camera, it had a few mule deer on it. Um, looks like a brown bear and a cub. So I went ahead and took that down. Right here is where it was at. Kind of looking down right through here. But I've got a better idea of a spot to put that one and the other one I took down. 
So it's about the middle of the day right now. I think I'm gonna take a break, get something to eat, go down the creek, get some more water. I think my plan is to get back to camp tonight, sleep there, and get up, move camp, and maybe a mile and a half, two miles, and hunt a couple of those water holes where those cameras were at. Saw quite a few bulls on the cameras. Um, nothing huge, but this unit is a over-the-counter archery, so not expecting anything too big, really. Just making it back to camp. Just a moment ago, I heard a bugle. on top hard to tell if it was a bull or another hunter but plan for tonight is to fill up all my water cook some supper and go to bed there's a tent basically all I left down here was hiking sticks tent sleeping bag cooking supplies. Really wish as little of weight that I left down here. I should have just taken it all up with me. It saved me the trip coming back down here and I could hunt early in the morning. But I wasn't sure what I was going to get into. Hey guys. Tuesday, September 5th, hiked back in here, brought the camp with me, trying to find a spot to set up to uh, just sit and hunt over that water hole. And I had just taken my pack off and a bull touched off right down here in the bottom. So I did some cow calling and then he bugled back. So I'm gonna go down and See if we can find him. But he's sound like he's right down there in the bottom. Right around in there someplace. So let's see if we can close the distance. Guys, it sounds like he's right behind, maybe somewhere in there. Not very far away. Problem is, got this separating us from him. I'm gonna sit here and see if I can pick him out of the pines. But in pretty nasty country really thick over there so I don't know if I can maybe if he moves around a little bit I can get him in the binoculars or spotting scope well I've sat here ate uh, lunch and tried to glass him up out of all those pines I've moved three or four different vantage points to try to find him in there but it's just so thick I cannot see so 
I've actually cow called and bugled back and forth with him multiple times and he hasn't moved. I'm sure he's bedded down. So I think I'm gonna try to get down the bottom of this canyon. Maybe work my way up to him. But he is <clears throat> sounds like he's right right in there. There's another one just bugled higher up, sound like. So I've got to get down to the bottom of this canyon. Kind of right on the edge of the cliff here. It looks like I can maybe go around the top here, then dive in, scale all those rocks, get down to the bottom, and then work my way up that finger on that left side. The wind is blowing to the left, so the wind should be okay. We'll see what it is when I get over there. But wish me luck. Well, made it down here to the bottom. It only took me about five minutes to get down here, so I'm doing pretty good on that. Um, I just want to show you guys this country. It's pretty gnarly country. I came right down through that and I was right up by that dead tree trying to glass him. So I went around the backside and then dove in off of those rocks. So and he is probably not even three, four hundred yards up there. Pretty sure he's bedded down. So, let's go and get up to him and see what happens. If my mother ever, ever sees this video, she's gonna kill me. She's gonna have a heart attack. Sounds like he's a lot higher up. I'm gonna keep moving. Getting closer, guys. The wind. The wind's been moving around a lot on me. Been moving. Got just a little bit of wind blowing to the left, which is good. But we're getting a lot closer to him. But this country is nasty. Nasty, nasty country. Look at this. How steep it is. Look at that rub. I didn't even see that rub down there. Wow, that's a fresh rub, looks like. They're in here. I've made it up here to, I've got, I had some markers that I kept in mind that I thought I heard him. He's basically directly across, if he's still bedded down. I'll do some cow call and see if we can give him the bugle. Sounds like he's straight across. I don't think he's moved at all. I'm gonna start working my way across. I think I've got enough elevation. The wind keeps going back and forth. So, this is fun, getting close to him. This is no wonder I couldn't see him. This is just thick, thick, rugged, nasty country. But that's what they like. That's where he's at. Well, it's starting to get interesting up here. 
was chasing after this bull that was to the left of me and I found this water and I ran out of water on the way up here so I decided I'd be smart if I got some water right now so I got some water pumped good old water for the night but there were bulls starting to crackle off on both sides of me there's one that keeps bugling right over there and the one I've been chasing is somewhere in that direction the wind keeps going back and forth see it's kind of blowing to the right so it'd probably be best to go after the bull on my left according to the wind but yeah it's starting to get really fun bulls and on both sides of us to see if we can actually get eyes on one It'd be great I'm still chasing that bull but got a pretty good vantage point here kind of see where I've been so I started setting up right over here to just sit this evening and hunt so I started there and heard this bull came down through there and out and right out through here is where I was glassing and then I went on around and down those rocks to the creek and then all the way up but he just bugled, bugled a little bit ago and he's still up higher He's still up a lot higher. I'm not real sure how to get up there. It's really steep rocks. I'm gonna try though, see if I can get up to him. I don't know if he is up out of his bed or if I didn't realize how high he was. Probably didn't realize how high he was, if I had to guess. So, I'm gonna keep working my way up. It's uh, almost three o'clock right now. So, still got plenty of daylight left. If I can get up to him. Good thing is, we're on one, and I've got everything I need in my pack. I've got camp and everything with me. Has not been fun lugging it up here, but I'm really glad I did because it is. Well, it's 20 till four o'clock right now. There's no way I can make it to the bottom before dark. So I'm gonna stay after this bowl until it's dark and find somewhere to sleep. That'll be a task. There's nowhere flat. Okay, I've moved up about another 50 yards. Gotta be getting pretty close to him. See if we can get him the bugle again.
He's up there raking the trees. He's about 45, 50 yards away. yards maybe held my first pen right behind his shoulder nailed him I had the GoPro running so I don't know what kind of footage we got he came in raked the tree right in front of me right in front of me quartered turned Wow Wow guys the hike up here was worth every ounce of it cannot believe it beautiful bull beautiful bull Wow guys that was incredible All that hard work paid off. Man, that was awesome. Looked like a good shot. Just shaking, shaking. I cannot, cannot believe I held it together. Cannot believe it. Wow, man. The long ways up here. Sweet. Man. Wow. Incredible. Absolutely incredible very fortunate to be able to take time off work come out here and chase these elk around man that was amazing thank the good lord I'm gonna give him some time go up see what kind of blood we have see if I can find my arrow looked like a good shot I've got everything with me I can pull the the card out of the GoPro See if I got any kind of, see what kind of shot I had. Man, sorry guys, my hand is shaking like crazy. That was a beautiful ball. Okay, he was standing right in here. Right there, it's first blood. Not very much. I can see my arrow. Right over there, about 20 yards. Go check out the arrow. Looks like it's broken. Alrighty. I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him some time here. Tried to look back on the GoPro. I can't really see where the shot was. I felt like it was a good shot. I thought I heard him crash, but I don't want to chase him all over the, this mountainside. So I'm definitely gonna let him sit for a while. But I found the arrow at least. At least a piece of it. Still shaking. Okay guys, it's been about an hour and a half. 
Um, I walked about 20 or 30 yards where I thought he went. Haven't found any blood at all. So, a little bit worried about that. But I'm pretty sure I heard him crash in one little bugle. He's gasping for air. He wasn't very far away when he did that. But this is really thick country. So I really need to find the blood trail and follow that. Because if he crashed down in this really thick stuff, it's going to be really hard to find him. But I was looking at my arrow. And noticed that's basically was buried all the way into the fletchings. I'm shooting a 28 inch arrow. So I got 25, 26 inches in him and it broke. So the other part would still be in him. But I don't know. I'm worried I, worried I can't find any blood. I'll give him a little more time. It's um, 5.25 right now. So I've only got a few hours left of light. But I'd really like to get him found, at least cut up, get him hanging in the tree tonight. But either way, I'm gonna be spending the night on this mountainside so it is steep they do not mind this nasty country but I do I'm telling you this is nasty it's gonna be hard getting them out of here if I can find them hopefully I find them so give them a little more time here I got something to eat drink some water Hopefully I can find some blood. I'm really worried I can't find blood. Okay guys. Look what I just spotted. I didn't find any blood. No blood on the trail. But uh, I see a pile of antlers right up there. I don't know if you guys will be able to see them or not. Right there. Get them all cut up, quartered up, bagged. Get them hanging in a tree tonight. Maybe take a load down. We'll see. It's gonna be hard work on this hill. Cutting them up by myself. Whew, let's go up there and take a look at them. Looks like a dandy. Surprised he kept going uphill. I've always said. If 
fun ended when the bull hit the ground. This would be fun getting him out of here. That's what it's all about. Lugging him out. Okay, I'm getting ready to start skinning him here. Got my tag notched out. I'm gonna zip tie that to him. That'll be it. Start cutting him up, get him bagged up. He probably didn't go 75, 100 yards, probably just out of sight when he crashed. But I need to get him cut up. And I need to get, maybe take one load down before it gets dark. But it doesn't look too bad, maybe. A little bit of a finger right here, right above a finger. So we can probably just go right down this finger. And the creek is down at the bottom. I'd like to get him, maybe some of them down there tonight. Down by the river where it's a little bit cooler and get the rest of them down there tomorrow but today is uh tuesday my brother and his buddy ryan are coming friday or saturday it'd be nice to have some extra help but i don't think the meat will be any good by then so i'm gonna have to carry him out myself um I don't even know how far of a hike it is. I'll have to figure that out. It's a long ways, but we can do it. <laughs> Took me a while to get him cut up last night. The way he was tucked down in that hole, I had to remove his his uh, the quarters on the top and tried to move him after that. Couldn't get him to move. So then I went ahead and took the guts out, got to his tender loins, and was able to roll him over at that point. Um, Got his back straps out. I've got one rear quarter here. And I've got the rest of the meat up on these rocks, cooling down. So there's the other rear quarter, and then a front quarter, and a front quarter, and then along with the front quarters, the back straps, tenderloin, loose meat. But yeah, it took me four or five hours last night to do it, so that was tough. Um, the meat's pretty cool right now. It got pretty cold last night. I ended up, I tried to find somewhere to put a tent, but could not find any level ground. I ended up sleeping right here. Underneath the stars. Beautiful sky last night. I could hear elk bugling all night long. I don't know what it was. There was a lot of moonlight. I suppose they were up moving around, but kept hearing them bugle every half hour, hour at least. Lots of bugle. Sun's coming up now. Got a big day ahead of me. Get this meat hauled out. Time to trade in the old Matthews DXT for the hiking poles. So, had a fire going most of the night. I don't know if that, I guess, trying to keep critters from coming in here. All this meat laying everywhere. I've seen a couple different black bears and Last year we heard a mountain lion. Didn't have any intruders last night. But 
Grandpa was right. Fun's over when the bull hits the ground. Tough work getting him cut up. But let's get him hauled out. I've got camp moved down here and I've got all the meat down here at the bottom by the creek. It's still pretty cool. The meat is cool. So that's good. I was worried about it getting hot. And it's probably 60 degrees right now. But at night it's been getting down 35 or 40, maybe 45. But just taking a break. I'd like to get one more, at least one load out to the truck tonight. It's like 1.30 right now. I was just looking on the map and I think I'm about eight and a half miles from the four-wheeler and then the four-wheeler has got maybe a two or three mile Jeep trail. So good chance it'll be dark by the time I get back to the truck tonight. But really need to get this meat out. The uh, antlers are still up top. I figured I can come back and get those after the meat's taken care of. But man, my feet are really hurting from hauling that meat down that steep grade. My toes are jamming right in to my boots. So just down here at the creek, kind of washing up. I've got the tent set up here. I'm gonna throw all the gear in the tent before I go. The meat is all back there hanging in the shade. So that's the plan right now anyways. You grab something to eat, maybe take a quick nap. I didn't get much sleep last night, and I didn't eat a warm meal last night either, so need to get some food in me. But hopefully next time you see me, I'm at the truck. I made it, finally. Got here before dark. Just walking up to the trailhead now. Four wheelers here. My uh, the Onyx maps has got that hike at nine, just under nine and a half miles. Nine and a half miles. Long ways. Again, I've got the first load of meat. I've got a front quarter, back strap, and tenderloin. Made it to the four-wheeler. Never been more happy to see this old girl. The old Timberwolf, AKA Timmy. So, I hop on this girl and fire her up. Get to the truck. At least I feel like I got something done today. Hauling that meat out of the top. That did not feel very productive. But at least I've got one load. Safe and secure. It's like a decent mule deer. Small four point maybe. If you guys can see him or not. I don't have oops, binoculars or spotting scope with me of course. Looks like a decent little buck though. For this unit I would say. Keep moving. It's starting to get cold. September seventh, Thursday. 
I got the uh, first load of meat out last night. Took the four wheeler of the truck. Um, got the meat taken care of this morning. Got it to the butcher. Ate a nice hearty breakfast this morning and back at it. And I, uh, I moved the four wheeler, loaded up the four wheeler, moved the truck to a different trailhead, which will make the pack out a little bit easier, I think. It's a Onyx map. Had this hike that I did this morning at 10.9 miles. So it's a little bit farther than the nine, nine and a half that I did last night with the first load of meat. But I think it's gonna be worth it to avoid some switchbacks that I had to climb last night. At least this way I'll be loaded with a heavy load going downhill gradually. So that should be a lot better off. I just made it back to uh, the meat in the, in the tent. You can see the tent right down here. You can see one of the game bags still hanging. So that's great, still in the shade. And you can kind of see, it'd be really hard to tell that there's, let's see where it's at on here. There's a cliff right there, and that's where the head is still at. That's where we shot him. So you can kind of see, shot him up in there, all right down through there is kind of where I went to get the meat down to the bottom of the creek. So, get ready, I'm going down to grab the second load of meat. So, see how it goes. Hoping to be back to the truck tonight, before dark. I think it's three o'clock or so. I made pretty good time coming in. I'm on the way out. The second load of meat decided to uh, take on one of the rear rear quarters. And it is heavy. I thought maybe I could get two loads a day of meat, but one load round trip is over 20 miles. So to get two loads. You know, over 40 miles, there's no way I can do that. So, but I mean, as long as it stays cool, I should be fine at night. Just get one load a day. I'm about 100 yards from the trail. So, hiking will be getting a lot easier. Won't be bushwhacking through everything and in and out of the creek. I've discovered it's almost easier just hop in the creek, follow the creek, just jump, jump and skip from rock to rock. But easy to get wet that way too. I've got two wet feet right now. I took a spill. Both feet went in, went to stand up, realized I had an elk quarter on my back. <laughs> couldn't, get, couldn't get out of the water. So, it's gonna be a wet, slushy rest of the hike. But like I said, made it to the trail. The old fireball sinking behind the mountain. I'm not afraid to hike, hike the trail in the dark. It won't be bad. I think I've got about four miles left. So not too bad at all. Okay, it's about 10 o'clock right now. We just made it back to the pickup truck with the second load of meat. The last mile and a half was in the dark. I actually bumped into another hunter about four miles back and he had a mule and he offered to help me pack out the rest of the meat tomorrow so i'm planning on being at his camp 
that 5.30 in the morning is when he wanted me there. So, I'll probably have to leave the trailhead maybe at 3.30 or something. Make sure I'm there at 5.30. I'm gonna head into town, take this quarter to the, to the meat locker, take my boots to a laundromat, throw them in the dryer, get them dried out for morning, grab something to eat, get to bed, do it again tomorrow. Here we are. It's Friday the 8th. We are well, I hiked in this morning and met Mel and his mule at their camp at 5.30. And he offered to hike all the way back and help me pack out the last two loads of meat on his mule. He's got a mule deer buck tag so he's been out in the front I've seen a couple mule deer back in here and look at this look at these studs carrying my meat back to the truck for me cannot thank him enough what a great guy. The um, head is still up on the mountain where he crashed and Spike Camp is still down at the bottom of the canyon. But AJ and Ryan should be here sometime tomorrow. But it's a beautiful sight right here. Doesn't get any better than this. Look at this country. Basically, we were way back there, about five miles. We still got. We still got about six miles to go to get out but what a relief hopefully we can uh, find a nice buck on the way out that'd be a real treat Okay guys, it's Friday the 8th, a little after 5 o'clock, and we are on the home stretch. We've got about 1,500 feet to the truck, and could not be any happier. What a relief to get the meat out, and thanks to this old boy right here, old. Mel, and uh, Oh, what's his name? New Duke, not Duke. Duke. Newt. Newt. Oh, Newt. Newton. Thanks to this man right here. Cannot thank him enough. Going all the way back there with his mule. Helping me. Complete stranger. Didn't know me from Adam. Hiked all the way back there. We're not strangers anymore. That's right. So what? What, what brought you back here? You're doing some buck hunting, right? I Mule deer? deer hunting, yes. Yep. That was a good excuse to go for a long hike and look for some deer. 
no deer, but I did get the long hike in. Yeah. Yep. It's been uh basically spent all day with this this guy and enjoyed every minute of it. It's been some struggles for sure. Adventures. Adventures, that's that's uh that's the right word. I mean that's the first time you've been back in that canyon. Uh, yeah. The terrain is uh very uh challenging. Yep. Rough. Yes indeed. Um ungroomed. Yep. Raw. I guess that raw would be the best word for it. Yep. Raw wilderness. Yep. That's what it is. So right now we're on the highway. Yeah, we this is this is interstate right here. Look at this. Yeah. Interstate. <laughs> Let's take a look at old uh Newt carrying the load for us here. Look at this stud. You have anything to say, big guy? Yeah? Wiggle your ears. He's winking at everybody. But we've got a rear quarter on this side and the uh, front shoulder back straps and tenderloin on the other side. But it's been an incredible trip. It's always fun to come up here and have the adventure running around, meeting people up here. I've never met someone on top of the mountain that I didn't like a lot. <laughs>